So, and uh, he's going to talk to us all about tumblers. Yeah. Um, you, I'll, I'll take a microphone. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I don't know. I, I can be very loud, but I don't want to be no, kind no, of like use the disruptive. <laughs> yeah. Um, so now it's uh, with microphone and we're in New York. So welcome to my stand up show because this is no, it's kind of going to be because I just only one slide I have literally because it, ma it doesn't matter what kind of slides I would have because I really want to show you one particular thing. Anyone um, particularly starting with Kafka? and get like a super confused how to run it, how to produce messages to topics, how to consume messages from topic, or maybe even, I don't know, run uh, Kafka 4.0 without Zookeeper or something like that. Does it ring a bell for anyone? Zookeeper, any uh, Zookeeper fans in the room? Yes. Shout out. Okay, Zookeeper is gone. Uh, Kafka 4.0 fully removed and the fully self-managed uh, craft um, the, the consensus uh, mechanism. Now, I lied. Actually, I have a few slides. Uh, I work at a company called Confluent. I am a principal developer advocate. I get paid to do what I like, talking about code, talking about some uh, interesting technologies to like-minded people. Best job ever. Uh, Java champion, wrote the book about Kafka. If you're interested, Google me. Yeah, who's that guy? Who's that guy? <laughs> yes, it's me. It's about AI generated, so like. Yeah, I can, I can dress for um, weddings, uh, anniversaries, um, some family you know, gatherings. Usually I wear like a black t-shirt and red pants. So if you want just to get the stuff going on your laptop, this is the only place where you need to go today. There's a second place called developer.confident.io, but I will talk about this at the end. Um, this is where you can download this extension. And it does a few very cool things that I really want to show instead of like talking about this. Um, one, of the, one of the things when you're starting with Kafka, at least when I was starting with Kafka, first thing was always is to how to run this. Uh, let me do this slightly bigger so it will not be... Here we go. And in order to do these things, you need to go to your Apache Kafka website, you find some getting started guide, you download some stuff, you need to uh, execute some weird commands here. Okay, but I can do this. Uh, start server. And I'll start the server. Uh, let's see if it works. Um, and those commands now, it's uh, very important for you to execute those commands. Um, because uh, now the Kafka manages its own metadata, we need to find a place where this metadata will be stored, blah, blah, blah. You're probably not interested in this type of things when you're just getting started. Because when you're getting started, you just want to click the button and start seeing the messages comes in uh, and come out. See, like, what, what is this? Like, what kind of error is this? I have no idea. Now, in my uh, Visual Studio Code, anyone Visual Studio Code users? Any Emacs users? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Veeam, maybe? Like, usually when I mention Emacs and Veeam, people are like, what about Veeam? Um, yeah, I know, you guys, I know. Uh, so, in this case, it's a Visual Studio Code. No, the, the people who use Veeam, they can figure out how to deal uh, with these type of errors. When you're just like, starting copy-pasting errors, probably you can find the ways. Uh, with this, you go to Extensions tab, you search for Confluent. And if the internet will be cooperating, we will see this is the sanction that you um, getting installed, blah, blah, blah. You get installed, you get this new nice tab. One of the things what you can do immediately, just select local cluster, uh, which is cluster with one node. And now it will run the Kafka cluster. It will download the image and will start it locally. So you will be able to start doing some, some interesting things uh, with, with your Kafka cluster. Um, in this case, let's see if it's, uh, it's a bringing in. Yes, it is. Uh, uses the, some special, special image for, uh, for local development, but it looks and feels exactly the same as any like, uh, version of Apache Kafka. Now, so I started this local, and now what I can do here, I can uh, see what stuff I do have. So I run this previously, so I have some data that's already available from my previous run. So if I go here and see some messages, 
in this particular topic. Maybe there's some messages are there. There's no messages here, and which is fine. So in order to um, in order to start seeing those messages, we need to have uh, something to produce. How many of you use console Kafka tools, console producer and consumer? All right, not many people. So you can go this route, or you can do uh, immediately route with something that is application. In this particular case, this extension has very neat feature that allows you to get like a scaffolding project of Kafka producer, consumer. So let's see uh, what we have in terms of producer. We don't have a producer, but we have a consumer, yes? We're going to try different approach. It's not probably called, it's called client or something like that. Yeah, client. So uh, producer, client in Go. Any, any preferences, what we should choose? Uh, .NET, Go, Java, JavaScript, Python. Python, okay, let's try Python. Not the first choice, but hey. Um, so now, so from this uh, well, nice um, the wizard window, you will be able to uh, do multiple things. First of all, it will ask you about the Bootstrap server, where you can get the Bootstrap server. Right click here and copy Bootstrap server. You get in here, you get some random uh, port number. It's done in order to prevent the conflicts. If you're running any Docker containers already with Kafka, um, you will get this local deployment with its own, um, with its own uh, address. Now, the, it will ask Kafka if it's a secured cluster. It will ask like a key and the secret, but let's do NYPE, New York Platform Engineering, generate and save. So it will ask me to where to put this. I'll put this somewhere safe, like downloads folder. Um, play E. Save to directory and open in the current window. Now, I do have a full blown uh, client here. So what I'm interested in, in producer. Um, and I'll say virtual, it's a cousin Python. <laughs> Who said Python? So now I need to figure out with this uh, the visual uh, virtual environments and stuff like that. Unfortunately, Unfor I've done this before. So um, the this is the part of Visual Studio Code. There is a plugin for Python that allows you to um, configure your um, editor to use uh, the Python virtual environment. So what it will do, it will install a dependencies. And in this particular case, we're gonna do this producer. So if I will go ahead and run this producer. So I'm expecting to see something that goes into, into my Kafka topic. And if I will go back here to my local, now I will see this NYPE, I'll click here, watch. And after that, I will start seeing all these messages will be generated and sent to this topic. This is our terminal. How many messages? We sent here a few messages. And now all these messages are here. In, uh, in a Kafka topic. And I did this just with one hand. How about round of applause? So essentially, this is how you start building your stuff. I didn't move to different tools. Everything starts in my integrated environment. Everything works here. But Victor, I have my own Kafka cluster, and I don't want to use this like a local development. I would say, not the problem. So for this, let me kill uh, this environment a little quick. So my uh, local Kafka container will die. Now, it's a very common situation when you already have Kafka at some point. It may be already some of the containers that you're using, or you may be uh, using some managed service that you wanted to connect to. So in this particular case, I have, um, say, another environment, development environment, also in Docker, and I want to uh, use the same environment because I'm developing some stuff here, and now I want to connect this instead of using whatever um, this local image is providing me. For example, this particular case, it uses Apache Kafka official image. There's, um, 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 there's a lot of, over the years in Kafka community, there were a lot of uh, images that were created by Bitnami, by Confluence, some other, like Red Hat, um, now Apache Kafka has its own official image. Um, and also there's a native image, native Kafka, that even starts even faster because it uses um, native, um, native binary instead of like a Java and JVM. Now, let's run this. If I would just do Docker 
up. So, and in this environment, I'll start my Kafka cluster. There's some other things that might be, I'm using my developer in this particular case, it's a Flink. Um, and now it shows me that uh, my uh, Kafka cluster is available on this address. So I will go ahead and in, into here. In uh, configuration, I can adjust different configurations saying that this is the, my local host, this is what I want to connect to. Um, and this is also supports multiple different uh, implementation, Kafka Cloud. Uh, others work like any Kafka uh, provider supported. If you're using anything like even Pulsar. Anyone using Pulsar? Anyone know what the Pulsar is? Good, good, okay, <laughs> nice. Kafka, Kafka is the best uh, streaming platform. You should use Kafka, only Kafka. Now, so in this case, I'm going into this Kafka cluster. I see there's some schemas. Let's see what we can do with the schemas. Anyone using um, more than one language in your environment when you're developing your microservices or any type of applications? Or everyone using like same stack and you kind of like enforce people to use .NET or like use Python and everyone is using Python. Any uh, multi, uh, how we call it, not a multi-language, it's a um, polyglot, pl polyglot environments. It's, it's actually very common, uh, believe me or not. And uh, when the Kafka becomes a central neural system for your data, uh, you want to use different uh, applications and different connections. Here's the problem though. We in Java, we're super proud about all things Java, especially we're super proud about the way how we serialize our objects. I'm just kidding, if you ever deal with Java serialization, you know it's a mess. But um, there's some other ways how the people can communicate data, but in different languages. So there's a protobuf, uh, there's Avro, there's Parquet, different, uh, the JSON schema, all this type of stuff. Now, we want to have a repository where this information will be stored. So Kafka is repository for data and schema registry is repository for our schemas, for our metadata of our data. So we need to have something, uh, let's see, make, I do have um, some data generator that can produce, let me see if I can open this, my workshop. And there's my local Kafka configuration now, it uses old version. So in this case, I will be using my data though I just started. And this one is 8081. Oop. Okay. And when I will be doing make uh, local data generator local, it will be just like a pumping data into my um, into my Kafka topic. Uh, cannot connect because it uses incorrect port. Of course, it's a fat fingers, and I'm using one hand still, still one hand, and no one is correcting me. Now this should work. I apologize for this. So inside my uh, Confluent local deployment, uh, I'm going with this Kafka. Now there's a the flights. And this flights topic now, uh, apart from having data and there's like a massive amount is, is pumping through the system, I also have access to schema that describes how my uh, data would look like. So in this particular case, we're using Avro. So every Kafka client in a different language, if they support Avro, will be able to consume this data. And uh, we at Confluent, we provide these libraries for majority of the languages. So whatever, except probably Cabal, I don't know. Um, we stopped supporting this uh, for a while. And um, in this case, tough crowd. Like, I, I don't know, I'm, I think I'm, I'm on fire here. I'm just like a banger after banger after banger. And no, no one is just like, yeah, that's New York, Victor. Just suck it up, go. So. Yeah, before, <laughs> they having a good time here, but you were fed with pizza. So, flight number, uh, that's information about the, the string, um, origin, destination. So this information can be used whatever client will be consuming this data. And uh, this information also used by uh, Visual Studio Code extension. I wanna try one thing. Uh, if we'll have a time, I wanted to show some of the like AI stuff because AI is cool stuff to show. Um, we also build a um, MCP server for Confluent Cloud where we can you know, talk through the, uh, this uh, AI-enabled IDEs. 
So this extension works on Visual Studio Code proper, but also it works on Cursor if you're using this type of jazz, uh, Windsurf, and I wanted to show uh, Windsurf and, um, and uh, some of the things what you can do in Kafka Cloud, but I was not gonna because I just recorded the live stream where I explained everything. And now this is the, my third slide that I promised there would be no slides, but the third slide, I do live streams about Kafka. I'm uh, teaching people about stream processing, Flink, um, all things, uh, all, all things Kafka, and actually did the, the stream today about how to teach your AI client to talk to Kafka cluster and get the topic information and stuff like that. Um, I'm available for enhanced interrogation if you have any questions about anything, but hopefully you will try this uh, Visual Studio Code extension and it will help you be better in your journey uh, with Kafka. Once again, my name is Victor Gamov and as always, have a nice day.